My name is Lindy Outred. I'm a professor in the journalism department here at Centennial. And I had worked with Ted for many years before he retired. He is, he was a wonderful colleague. He is still a very good friend. And the office feels rather empty without him. He had lots of energy, always had time for students, uh, always had great ideas, tons of energy, and we really miss him. My name is Ted Barris. I'm 69 years old. I'm a freelance writer, historian, broadcaster, author, um, recently retired professor of journalism at Centennial College, and uh, my life's work is writing. I've had lots of adventures as a writer. Uh, most of them in the last 20 or 30 years have had something to do with veterans. I'm always asked why I've chosen veterans as a subject so often. Well, when I started writing history, I was always looking for a story that had never been told. And more often than not, veterans had never talked about their experiences. That's almost a, a, a given. Whenever you talk about veterans, it's always that they never like to talk. They don't like talking about it. So my job was to get them to talk. And I found it very easy. And they felt comfortable with me. When I was doing research for my book about the Battle of Vimy Ridge, I had access to a number of boxes of files at the Library and Archives in Ottawa, the National Archives. And I found in the files a reference to a woman ambulance driver. And through a number of circumstances, I finally discovered who she was, because in those days, women were identified by their husband's name. So in the file, it said Mrs. David Livingston. I eventually found out that her maiden name, her single name, was Grace McPherson. And her story was this, it was remarkable. She was the first woman in Vancouver to have her driver's license, and when the war broke out, she actually offered her services to the Red Cross to drive ambulances. They refused her. She went to England anyway. She manages to get an interview with the Minister of Militia and War, a guy named Sam Hughes, pleads her case, he refuses her, but then suddenly, in the middle of the war, all the conditions change, and the idea that men should be driving ambulances was changed, because they would be better serving the war effort at the front. The ambulance driver's seats became open and Grace got her position. She actually became a driver, and her first night actually driving an ambulance was the 9th of April, 1917, the first day of the Battle of Vimy Ridge. The book that I'm working on right now is called Dam Busters, and it's about a famous uh, military aviation raid in the Second World War where bomber pilots went into Germany under darkness and very low to the ground to bomb German dams, hydroelectricity dams. Um, most people don't realize, again, there was a movie made about it in 1955, and it makes the story seem as if it was entirely British. All English airmen, or virtually. Well, it turned out a quarter of the crewmen on all those airplanes that went in were Canadians. Probably the greatest honor in my life as a writer and as a person was to share the, this chair writing a book with my father, Alex Barris. And my dad and I co-authored a book called Days of Victory. And we wrote the original draft of this in 1995 when the world was acknowledging the end of the Second World War. That's why it was called Days of Victory. The, world, the war was coming to an end. And my dad and I, uh, my dad was a, an entertainment writer. He covered uh, show business for many, many years. He got the Order of Canada for his work chronicling the history of entertainment in Canada. But we connected on this book because he had been a veteran. He was a veteran. And I was curious about veterans. And so we brought our skills together for this book. And the honor was, when the book came out, it zoomed right to the top of the bestsellers list. And so there's my name with my dad on the top of the bestsellers list in Canada. And that was a great, great honor. When I was teaching, I had no time. Because if I wasn't teaching, I was here. And if I wasn't here, I was teaching. And if I was somewhere in between, it was commuting from there to here. Um, so uh, time for sort of sitting around. I mean, I love to read. I read the newspaper every day. I listen to news and, and um, current affairs every day because I'm a, an information uh, you know, addict. I need it. Um, but when all of that's passed, um, I love spending time playing hockey. 
uh, and I play hockey even in the summertime. In fact, um, I play tonight, and we play Monday nights uh, in Oshawa. But in the regular, in the wintertime, I'm playing two, three, four times a week because I just love it. And it's not because I'm good. In fact, I'm not very good. But what I love doing is skating and passing and, and the camaraderie that exists among recreational players. I wrote a book about it because it's such a, a neat aspect of Canada. We um, Probably there's no other sport where women and men can play into their 70s and 80s and even into their 90s can play the sport they loved as kids. I don't think that's possible in maybe in cross-country skiing or um, swimming but hockey is certainly distinctive by allowing older players to play the game they loved as kids.